probably probably he enjoyed my talk in Blaha because my talk was the last in the, the last one in the, uh, of the day and he was in Vegas and probably he was all the day drinking and in the end of the day everything everything was good for him <laughs> well first of all thank you for for uh, standing here it's very early in the morning uh, i would like to say thank to to the people managing the conference because i got a lot of problems with my schedule i needed to to be the first one in the second or the second day and they they did it uh, so thanks for for having me here the second thing is that i'm from from spain and uh, my friends told me that that i'm crazy because in madrid we are right now in 25 degrees and I'm completely frozen today in the morning and I'm not ready for a special with a special clothes for for cold and this uh, I'm crazy totally so uh, first of all I would like to introduce myself uh, I'm Chema Alonso I work in in a small company in Spain and uh, we are the company who created FOCA how many of you know FOCA FOCA how many of you love FOCA how many of you are a FOCA lover <laughs> Well, as you know, probably now a FOCA is a, is a seal and uh, it's a tool for, for do tactical fingerprinting using open source intelligence and you can do a lot of free version from our website. Uh, the second thing that I would like to say to you today is that please came to Spain. <laughs> In Spain we are uh, out of money, you, you know, we are Spanish, we've been partying all the time, we are not working, we are spending all the time drinking, lacing and so on. Uh, so right now Madrid and Spain is a, a, bis a big, a big uh, place in which you can spend your money. And this is Madrid. How many of you have been uh, to Madrid any time in your life? And probably you love Madrid, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Well, Madrid, but there are a lot of places. I'm living in, in Madrid, but there are a lot of places in Spain. I would like to show you some of them. This is Barcelona, one of the, this is one of the most beautiful monuments in Barcelona. This is a, a cathedral. Probably you know it because it's the sacred family in Barcelona. It's not finished yet. And we got another uh, places in Spain like this. This is not the Caribbean Sea. This is very close to, to Spain. This is Ibiza. How many of you have been in Ibiza? Oh, <laughs> the bad guys, <laughs> the really bad guys. <laughs> and if you want to enjoy Spain, there are a lot of places in the whole country. One of my favorites is San Fermines. Have you been to San Fermines any time in your life? San Fermines? No? Not? Well, San Fermines is the most big party, the biggest party in the world. And I don't like bulls at all. I don't like bulls at all. Actually, most of the people living in Spain don't like bulls at all. But the party is not just uh, running balls. If you want to run balls, it's easy. There is only one single rule. If you, if you are drunk, don't run. It's the only, the only rule. And the party is, is about enjoying. Uh, it's a, a one-week party that you can enjoy a lot. There is only one ad advertisement that I would like to say to you is don't do like the Australians. People living in, in Pamplona, which is the city of San Fermín, has a special tradition, which is cheat on Australians, and they, are, uh, they had, uh, have convinced to all Australian people, and half of the people in San Fermín are from Australia, that they need to jump from one monument in one small square. And uh, the joke is that every year, Year after year, one guy from Australia goes to the hospital because nobody is going to, to catch the guy when he jumped from the square. So if you go to YouTube and search for it, you will discover how, <laughs> how is the trick. This is another party, it's Tomatina. The idea is fighting with tomatoes. We are from Spain. <laughs> we don't make sense at all. And, <coughs> and, the, and, the, and the job that I would like to, the, the word that I would like to present you today is, is something very similar to this. Uh, we are from Spain and we got one idea, one day we got an idea. We wanted to do a botnet. How many of you have been thinking about creating a botnet any time in your life? One day when we found one friend, we were thinking about creating a special malware in Android and with the update, or, no? something like that. Well, it's something that uh, is very, very attractive for anyone working in security, not just for managing uh, all, the, all the bots, mastering all bots and search for porn videos and so on, which is very important. M uh, it's more to, uh, to have knowledge uh, about how to to do it, how to build the botnet. It's the, the most important thing for probably most of us when we are thinking about creating a, a botnet. And we wanted to do that, but we are lazy. We are like these people. Look the 
energy power system that they are using with two flip-flops. Uh, it's incredible. It's an Spanish system for <laughs> creating the CPD. And we were lazy. We wanted to create a bonnet, but we, we were lazy. Uh, we have not money, of course, you know it. <laughs> we are asking the German people some money to, <laughs> to do the bonnet. We have not zero days, of course. We, we are from Spain. Half a zero days are very complicated stacks. You need to be studying a lot of years now. It, it's not for us. And of course, we are in the FBI, the NSA, or uh, Google, Apple, or Microsoft that actually they are managing a big botnet called Internet right now. They got all the computers, all the smartphones, and so on. So we needed to, to create something different, something like the Spaniards, something in our own style. So we thought that the, the easy way to, to do a botnet is ask people to be in FET. So we thought about a website saying, please install this program is for a botnet. This is just for, uh, uh, for a security research. Just install this program and, and so on. Probably uh, we will have success with that trick. But in the end, we were thinking about another tricks because it's quite simple to convince people to be, to be in FET. So <coughs> Sorry. One of the things that uh, uh, probably we love the most uh, are the man-in-the-middle attacks. The idea of man-in-the-middle attacks is very simple. If you are in the middle of the communication, then you are managing all the communication and you can do whatever you want it. Right now, are uh, very well known the R spoofing techniques or the rogue, uh, rogue DHCP, rogue uh, Wi-Fi uh, access point. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, we are working uh, in a tool that we are going to present uh, next month. Is Evil Foca is a is like Cain. Do you know Cain? The man in the middle for IPv4 networks, but in IPv6. For the idea of this tool is just doing the same: click, drag, and drop. I want to be in the middle of this computer and this computer. And almost nobody is taking into account that all Windows machine, all Mac OS X machine, and uh, all Linux machine are working in IPv6 by default. So probably you are connecting to your uh, file server using IPv6 and you are still configuring the IP before. It doesn't make sense, but you are still configuring IP before. So we created that, that tool. The problem with this kind of techniques is that you need to be in the, lo uh, in the local ar uh, area network. You, you need to be connected into the local area network, and it was impossible for us if you wanted to do the botnet on the internet. The second idea is to do something like the Russians. The Russians years ago created the uh, browser helper object Trojans. The idea is that if you are able to install a plugin into the web browser, then you are managing the whole communication between the browser and the internet. This is what Google is doing with the Google bar and Microsoft is doing with the Bing bar and so on. They are analyzing all your traffic and so on. This is one of the reasons because sometimes you, are, you have a robot.txt file saying to Google, don't index this directory and Google is not paying attention to your robot.txt. That is before because you are using Chrome and the URL is going to be reported to Google and so on. The problem with this, with man in the browser is that you need to install uh, a plugin. And right now, plugins are very well uh, uh, under surveillance. So there are a lot of tools analyzing the plugin. It's a binary file that you need to install in the machine. So it's very complicated. So the third thing that we were analyzing was to do a man in the tap. OK, we cannot inject, we cannot compromise the whole browser. But probably it's very simple to inject a simple JavaScript file into the tab. And with JavaScript, it's possible to do a lot of things. So the idea of creating a, a JavaScript botnet is not new. There are a lot of proof of concept about how to manage uh, a JavaScript botnet. And the idea is quite simple. You only need to f discover, I don't know, a vulnerability in the control panel and then in inject uh, some JavaScript file in all documents. This is one of the things that uh, Crime uh, exploit exploitation kits are using right now, Black Hole, and the rest of commercial tool for crimeware are using this, tri this trick. The other thing is just to discover a, cross -size, a persistent cross-site scripting and then inject that uh, JavaScript code. And all visitors are going to be fed with that JavaScript. And then you can use uh, the, the power of all uh, web browsers to do whatever you want and so on. 
So JavaScript uh, in the middle is a good topic because you can access to the URL, you can access to the form fields, you can access to the cookies. Well, it's supposed not to be possible to access to the cookies when the cookies are uh, HTTP only, but even using HTTP only cookies is possible to do some tricks to, to get that, that cookies using the error 400 in Apaches or uh, using uh, Java plugins and so on. There are some tricks to, to get even that kind of F cookies. So we thought that JavaScript in the Middle East, it was a, a, good, a very good idea. There is also a, a project on, on the internet from one Italian guy, which is called Browser Exploitation Framework Project, BIF, and it has a very, very powerful control panel, and the only thing that you need to inject into the website is a JavaScript payload, a small piece of code to, uh, to connect to the control panel. It's very simple. In the end, we decide not to use Beef because Beef is very well known, and right now some antivirus are, rec are recognizing the JavaScript file which is uh, in use by this control panel. So we decide to do something simple. So how to create a JavaScript bonnet from, from the scratch? Well, the first thing that we were thinking about was creating a man-in-the-middle schema using Tor nodes. How many of you are using Tor nodes? Tor, Tor network? Well, we, we installed a, a rogue uh, Tor node, and at the beginning it, it was working very well. So we were intercepting all communication in Tor networks because if you are the last node, you are the exit node, you can analyze all traffic. Uh, of course, if you are the first, the first node of the network, you can analyze also all traffic. So, oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, great. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not that bad. 15 minutes later, <laughs> it's a Windows 8 machine. <laughs> well. In the end, it, it was working very well at the beginning, but uh, people managing Tor, Tor nodes are uh, very aware of that kind of attacks, and we were discovered because we were uh, changing the DNS response at some point, and they were doing tests against all, all, all queries. The idea is quite simple. You need to, to query a DNS using the Tor network and query the DNS not using the Tor network, and if there is some difference, then something bad is happening in, in your connection. So after uh, several days, uh, we were discovered, and we needed to take off the, the Tor node. So we think, OK, Tor is very complicated, but what about proxies? How many of you are using proxy servers on the internet to be anonymous? Please, hands up, hands up, confess. <laughs> if you go to the internet and uh, you read any manual about how to be anonymous on the internet, the first line say, configure an anonymous proxy. How do you read it? Yeah, it's quite simple. And it's very, very easy to configure a proxy. So we decide to create a fake proxy. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, buy a bulletproof server. Of course, take care about Pirate Bay, Amazon, remember that Amazon kick, off, uh, kick out uh, uh, Wikileaks server. Uh, Mega lot, of course, <laughs> right now is, is out. So if you want to do this, you need to select a country with a special condition. You know that the law in internet is depending on the country in which you are working. If you are in Europe, you can have a network scanner and you are a criminal. And if you are in Iraq or Kazakhstan or whatever country around the world, maybe you can shut down the website and nothing happened. So select a, 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 a web server in a country in which the law is different. Then just configure the squid proxy. It's very simple. The idea is just uh, we are going to configure a squid proxy that is going to do something like this. When the, the client asks for a web, we are going to request the web. The HTML will, will be sent to the client perfect. We are not going to do nothing with the HTML file. And then when the HTML file loads a JavaScript file, we are going to intercept the JavaScript file and inject a special payload, which is only a, a JavaScript function with two lines of code. 
that connects that JavaScript to our, our control panel. That simple, only two lines of code. We decide not to do anything with HTML, HTML file because sometimes uh, in HTML file you can configure a special tag to uh, avoid JavaScript in HTML files. Uh, we would like to uh, we would like to to be completely stealth, so we just inject a JavaScript file, a JavaScript function in JavaScript file to be more more stealth. So of course. Uh, every time the payload is loaded in the in the tab, it's going to connect to our control panel, and we are going to send the payload. And the payload could be, uh, give me the cookies, give me the URL, give me the form field, give me the password, crack this password, whatever you want it. So to configure this, the only things that you need to do is just to activate the the right URL rewriter in in Apache. To, to modify the fi files, then we uh, change um, the expiration policy. The idea is just to say, okay, please uh, load the JavaScript file, and it's not going to to be outdated ever. So always you need to to load the JavaScript, load it from the cache. That's the idea. And of course. Uh, uh, to infect all JavaScript, we created this uh, Perl file. It's a Perl file with uh, common injection because it's for us. <laughs> and uh, you can see the only thing that we are doing is injecting the passarela JavaScript, it's a Spanish, Spanish name, to the, the JavaScript file that the client is requesting to the web server. That's the idea. Quite simple. And the code, the lines of the function that we are injecting, injecting is something like this. The only uh, we are uh, reporting the URL to the control panel, and the idea is that uh, that um, we uh, we are doing uh, a check just in case that in only one website you are infecting different JavaScript. So we create an object, and if the object in JavaScript is created, we are not going to to do it again. That's the, the only trick that we are doing here. And that's all. Once you finish to configure your, pre your proxy server, you have to create an advice. So the idea is that we publish this advice in the proxy server saying, following proxy server is being used for a security research. All JavaScript files will be infected and your, and your data will be collected. If you want to be safe, don't use this proxy. If you do that, don't send sensitive information. After all, you continue, do it on your own risk. Of course, nobody read it, oh. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we, te we took this trick from the U.S. government. This is the, the arm, the, an FTP site in the, in the U.S. Army, and as you can see, the warning is, is the same. The following unsecure F FTP, FTP site is for temporary offline and online fine for official government use only. Any other use is un unauthorized. Use this unsecure F FTP, uh, FTP site is at your own risk, and the only security pro protection is just click on here. So if the army uh, could do, the, do this, we could do it also. So <laughs> then we got the proxy server, then we, go, we got our uh, IP address and our port, and we uh, went to a proxy, anonymous proxy server list, and we published a new proxy server saying, hey, we discovered an anonymous proxy server here. And we publish the IP address. And the day, it, uh, two or three days after, internet do its magic, and the IP address was in 1,110 different sites because all proxy server lists are copying uh, one to each other. So in the end, just publish one I, one proxy server in one proxy server list, and all proxy server lists are going to have your IP address, which is good for you. So. Once that your IP address is published on, on the proxy server list, the day after, you are going to have a lot of people connecting to your proxy server and uh, requesting JavaScript files through the proxy server. So we created some special payloads, very simple payloads. The first one, just a cookie stealing, but not we, we didn't worry about uh, secure cookies. Didn't we didn't uh, where we, we weren't worried about HTTP only, just normal cookies. And of course, we created this uh, small JavaScript function to uh, hook 
all uh, form fields and still all data in form fields. So the idea is that uh, with this function we are hooking the submit event. So anytime a submit event is produced in a in a form, this JavaScript file is going to copy all uh, all information in in the form fields and send it send them to the send it to the control panel. The idea is that there are on the internet thousands and thousands and thousands of websites in which the login page is an HTTP uh, uh, page uh, uh, that it connecting to an HTTPS uh, uh, program. But in the HTTP, you can uh, steal all username and password. And that's all. Only doing this, we were able to have 4,000 and I don't know how many hundreds in one single day. It's not bad. So the question is, who in the hell is using this kind of service? Who is using proxy servers on the internet? You? How many of you? Well, of course, the kind of people who were using this kind of uh, anonymous proxy server most of them were bad people. First, uh, f uh, first of all, the Nigerian scammer, and it's quite quite interesting. Of course, we were at, uh, we uh, we were doing a security research, and we collect username and password of all those guys connecting through the proxy server. So we were connecting to their inboxes and analyzing the personal email boxes of anyone using this proxy server. And we discover a lot of interesting things. This is one of my favorites. This is the Niger one Nigerian scammer. The idea of this guy is, as you can see, the name Royal Hotel England at Hotmail. <laughs> it was supposed to be a, a British agent who is selling uh, a visa to work in, in the UK. And uh, he was sending an spam, an spam campaign like this. It's a UK immigration work permit and visa services. Uh, requesting 275 pounds to to get the visa, he did the the spam on on India in this case, and um, as you can see, we were reading the answer of of people. Some of the people were aware of the of the scan and is is uh, is answering we're answering something like I respect your kind information for me about that job, but at that time my group clients are not to believe me for deposit that amount. So after you give me the clearance paper, probably I will send you the money. So most of people were aware of this, but others don't. And of course, people were sending the money and all, uh, document, uh, and all documents. As you can see, the passport, the application form, uh, the CV, uh, all uh, pictures, even the finger fingerprinting tips in a paper, a picture of high quality, and so on. So <coughs> just doing an spam, they were able to collect money and do the easiest identity theft that you can create on, on the internet. So there were, there were uh, uh, more than 20 people uh, sending all this information in just one simple spam campaign. So it, uh, the other one was this. <laughs> When we were when we were analyzing the data, we discovered uh, guys connect uh, some connection to a social network for for having relationships, and one of the one of the profiles was this. The first thing that we thought was, "Oh my God, this girl knows how to use a proxy server." <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> so. After that, we were thinking, how in the hell, <laughs> how in the hell is someone going to use a proxy server to connect to your personal profile on the internet? And the third one was, do you think that <laughs> that girl really needs a social network to pull boys? <laughs> well, of course, that girl, Ancient Queen, uh, who, is working, who is living in Texas, uh, was um, was using different profiles in this social network, which is Meta, where singles meet. Uh, she was pretending to to be living in Texas, and she has 30. But in Half of Line, another social network, she was living in New Zealand, 
and she's 31, and in another social network, she's Ancient Queen, and she is living in Virginia, in the United States, and in another social network, she looks like this. <laughs> 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 of course, we were suspicious about that, that, that connection, so we decided to collect the username and password of that internet connection and get into the mailbox. And we were analyzing all the information. The funny thing is that this guy is, uh, is pretending to be a, a girl, is, is, a, is, a, is a he, and he's pretending to be a girl, and he's very well organized. He has a different folder for different profile he's pretending to be, and in different, prof uh, in different folder, he is uh, storing all chats that he is having with all the victims. So it's quite nice because you can read the, the, the chats. <laughs> are incredible. Hello, sweetie. <laughs> this, is the, this is the bad guy. <laughs> Hello, sweetie. Hello, my sweet mouse. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> how, are you in, how, are, how are you doing, sweetie? <laughs> and the other said, doing. <laughs> 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 Well, ta -ta, and she's one of my favorite. Well, of course, she she is requesting 700 euros to book for a flight and go to the house of the victim and do a, a lot of sexual things, um, hard porn, believe me. And <laughs> and she's requesting pictures. Please send me your naked pictures. <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of pictures are these naked pictures. <laughs> Well, we were analyzing the, the inbox and we were searching for Western Union and as you can see 158 messages requesting money from Western Union and the, and, and, and the emails were like this. This is the, the predator. Hello sweetie, why you have not sent me the naked pitch you promised me? <laughs> and I can send you my nick pits and please don't show uh, that are only for your eyes and so on. And the most important, and have also sent you my info for the Western Union. And, and, and the victim say, hello baby, I don't know, but my bank manager asked me the other city and country. And, and uh, it's not possible uh, now, it's not possible. So the, the address that the predator is is giving to the victim, of course, it's not the real address. So she is pretending to live in New Zealand, and then actually she is living in German. So in w at what point, if you if we go to the previous chat and you read the last <laughs> the last uh, chat, he is chatting with different victim at the same time, and at one point he start to to speak in German, I guess. Each frag I see it does when see it doesn't. So it's quite interesting, and of course this is the the bad guy, and the email address wa uh, was in Germany in a lot of places. Well, a lot of people doing this in social in social networks uh, using fake profiles. Well, another one. This is <laughs> this is in incredible. One of my favorites is the dog scammer. That guy is pretending to to sell uh, a dog on the internet. That's all. He is pretending to sell the same dog time after time. So he is publishing in all different of uh, of website for selling things the same picture of the of the dog. So we were we were scared. What kind of dog he is pretending to to sell? So please, if you if you are soft people, please don't say don't see this picture because it could hurt your feelings. Because the picture of the dog is this. <laughs> that guy should be in jail. <laughs> well, a lot of people pay money for this fucking dog. Incredible. Money, money. I send the money. Where's the dog? <laughs> the dog is just this. <laughs> Incredible. Well. Of course, we discover uh, people on the internet, uh, psychotic, insane. This guy was searching for porn from Column, and he was searching for mother, then rape sister, violent rape, violence, 
So we were we were about to send the IP address of that guy to the policy in column because that guy is <laughs> has a, a problem. <laughs> More people searching, f uh, in trying to be anonymous is quite interesting. They were using, of course, the famous words my IP address dot com. The 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 idea is that of okay the for what is my 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 IP? They are going to receive that. His IP address, the IP address is our proxy server IP address, so he will say, okay, I'm anonymous completely. But of course, we are going to, to receive to obtain the real IP address. So it's impossible for, for them to be anonymous, and, and they are using services like hideme.ru, and they are using the, <laughs> the, the email address. I'm not sure why in the hell they are using the, IP, the email address, so he is. In the end, he is not anonymous at all, and we got the email address. We were thinking about to send an email to, <laughs> to him. Hello. <laughs> no. Well, a lot of uh, people doing that. Another guy using the proxy server for us is uh, a complete uh, mystery. We are not sure what in the hell this guy is doing. There's a service on the internet with, uh, which is paying people for reading news. So the idea is that if you read a blog post or a news on, on a special paper, uh, you are going to retrieve uh, some money. The idea is that you cannot uh, automize this, just click, 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 because it's for a special uh, web application that is uh, analyzing the time, and you, you, are, you need to be reading the news that they <laughs> were sending to you. And after one month, he was and reading 383 articles, he earned 24 bucks. I'm not sure about this business, <laughs> <laughs> but the guy is still reading. So <laughs> <coughs> then we, we collect a lot of people connecting to social network, to the social profiles through the proxy server. And uh, we were worried about uh, what kind of people need to connect to, to a social network like Facebook using a proxy server. Uh, of course, the first idea was quite simple. This is an stolen account, and the guy is connecting to, to the stolen account using a proxy server to, not, to be not detected. But after, after analyzing more, more accounts, we discovered a lot of uh, Facebook accounts from the north of Africa and from special countries in which Facebook is censored. So the idea is that people trying to avoid the censorship are connecting to the social network using uh, uh, anonymous proxies on the internet. So if they try to connect to, the, uh, to Facebook or uh, any other social network to the nor uh, using the normal internet connection, they are fucked by the government. And if they try to do it using a proxy server, they are fucked for the bad guys. So it's, it's a tough story. And <coughs> <coughs> Another amount of, of clients or our proxy server were hackers or hacks or defacers. You know, the kind of, of hacker who is changing the, way the website that are injecting a web cell and so on. The problem is that, uh, well, the first time that we uh, discovered one of them, as you can see, we got the information related uh, to the web cell. We, we, got, we realized that we got cross-site scripting in our control panel, which, <laughs> which was very bad. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hackers are using the web cell through the, through the proxy server. And the idea is that uh, this is one of the, of the hackers who were using our proxy server to be anonymous. I, I'm not sure why in the hell he wanted to, to be anonymous uh, if, after all, he is publishing his email address. I'm, I'm not sure at all. And the idea is that he was uh, doing the, the, the defacement. It was in real time. He was from, from Turkey. And uh, the problem is that he was using a web cell like this. Of course, we were able to, to discover where the web cell was uploaded. So in the web cell, as you can see, if you analyze the, the JavaScript files, there is a security.javascript file, which is, which is not in the original site. This is very common 
in web cells. There are a lot of web cells published on the internet with a JavaScript file, which is uh, stealing the, the web cell. So that hacker was um, using an infect web cell, and we infect that JavaScript. So in the end, the hacker who was hacking was hacked. <coughs> Another kind of interesting result that we discovered on the internet was data related to intranet. And that was uh, what a surprise for us because we didn't think at the beginning that we were going to be able to retrieve any data from an intranet. But in the end, there are a lot of intranets that are using uh, JavaScript files from the internet. So we cannot infect nothing on the intranet, but we can infect JavaScript files from the internet. In this example, uh, this is a, an intranet from, a, from an ARP, ERP in a hotel. So the idea that is that this application, this intranet application, is managing uh, data from uh, hotel customers. And as you can see, we got uh, and, and the name. The it, this is uh, not a hotel. This is about something managing houses. I'm not sure what it is. And of course, we got the username and the password. Gustavo, we got your password. And the idea is that this guy connected to the internet uh, through a proxy server, probably to bypass the proxy filter that the company is using on the, on the local area network. So it's forbidden to connect to Facebook. It's forbidden to connect to porn sites or whatever. So this guy is connecting to the proxy server, connecting to watch porn. And after finishing watching porn, he's, uh, he's disconnecting the proxy server from the internet. But he's already in fed. The JavaScript is in the cache. So if this intranet is using, for instance, Google Analytics or any JavaScript file to do very nice menus, then that JavaScript, JavaScript is in fed. And is in fed in the cache until he erases the cache. So after disconnecting, he is still in fed, and we can collect all data. Even if he didn't connect to this intranet site, uh, when he was connected to the proxy. Understand? Interesting. And of course, from we, we discovered a lot of people watching porn on proxy server. This is a nice sto story. It's, uh, it's in Spanish, because Spanish is better. It's, uh, it's a church in which the, the monks were painting cocks. So we discovered a lot of places uh, for porn with username and password and so on. And we really, really discovered a deep internet that we previously didn't know about some special website like Masturbate. Ma no, mas uh, chast uh, no, Chaturbate is like chat roulette, but only for turbate. So, after analyzing all this information, we were thinking about how to, how to extend the attack. So the idea is you connect to the proxy server and you do bad things, and after all, you disconnect. But if you don't, di you don't uh, clean up your cache, you are in fed. The problem is, what happens if I, I like to, to steal your bank credentials? Of course, now one of you are going to connect to, the, uh, to the, your personal bank account using the proxy server. Of course not. But if you connect to any, any website on the internet, we can create a special payload to force you to download the JavaScript files of your bank. So you are connecting to a porn site, and we inject a JavaScript file who is sending requests, the JavaScript file of your personal bank. Then the, the, that JavaScript file is going to pass through our proxy server, and we are going to infect that JavaScript file with our payload. And the JavaScript file will be in, in the cache. So after all, after finishing <coughs> using the proxy server, you disconnect from the proxy server, do whatever you want it, and three days later, you connect to your personal bank account. At that point, the web browser is going to analyze if you have in the cache any JavaScript file which is going to be needed for that 
a website, and if you got the infected JavaScript file, then we are going able to take all your password from your bank. Understand? So the idea is that we created in, in the control panel this. In this example, for instance, uh, LinkedIn have a lot of JavaScript files that, uh, uh, that uh, are loaded in, in the main website, in the main uh, in the front page. And in LinkedIn, for instance, has a lot of places with the login op option in HTTP. Of course, then it's going to be a, a bridge connection to, to the HTTPS. But uh, with uh, the JavaScript, you are able to take the form field in HTTP. So the only thing that you need to do is to analyze what JavaScript files are load in every single page and create a special payload. So if you want to do a target attack on the internet or on, on a network in which you can do the same with a rogue uh, Wi-Fi or rogue DHCP or a normal man-in-the-middle attack, then you only need to select the target, analyze, uh, the files who uh, what are going to be load and then inject uh, in, in, in the payload that all JavaScript should be download even if you are connected to any other websites on the internet and enjoy an example of this with uh, California Credit Union League which is a, a bank on the states as you can see in the in the website of in the website of members Californian Credit Union League dot org, uh, which is in HTTP, uh, we got uh, different JavaScript. We select this one, which is uh, just a JavaScript file to analyze statistics and so on. Then we configure in our control panel. This is the how it looks like that. Anytime any user is connecting to credit control uh, to any website on the internet, that JavaScript will be uh, load uh, for the client. So we are going to distribute this JavaScript file, this infect JavaScript file, to all people connecting to our proxy server. So the only thing that we need to do is just okay, document write that JavaScript file. That's all. Then the client, uh, after connecting to, to, to our proxy server, will obtain this JavaScript file with the payload and in the end. So after loading the infect JavaScript, he's going to disconnect from the, from the proxy server. So as you can see, we select a port, uh, a special port, nothing suspicious. After connecting uh, with a proxy, if if the if the user if the victim uh, doesn't clean the cache, it will it will uh, remain in fed. So after all, he connects to to the to the website, and then we are going to retrieve the user and password in the in the website. So you can create any uh, special. Uh, targeted attack to any website, analyzing the URL, the JavaScript files, who is connected to your personal network, the country, whatever you want. It's quite simple to do this. So after analyzing all this information, we're thinking about uh, our JavaScript botnet. And I would like to, to make clear about some, some points. We didn't worry so much about all security protection that the user or the website uh, could have. For instance, we didn't worry about the attack or expiration timing. We didn't worry about to force an object to, to be updated on the, on the client. But it's possible to do that. There are a lot, of a lot of research on the internet about this topic, about how to force that a previously cached object uh, will, will, be, uh, will have an updated uh, mark. Then we, w uh, we didn't worry also about HTTPS. It wasn't necessary to collect all this kind of data. If we were doing something with uh, HTTPS, the amount of data that you can retrieve is huge. Uh, of course, we didn't want it to raise any alert, and we didn't have any flame digital certificate or not uh, a new digital certificate. But right now, right now, uh, this week is going to, to be published crime. Have you been listening, reading something about crime? Okay. 
I'm not sure if, if you know it, but Giuliano has published the video about crime. So if I have internet connection, let me show you how it works, the demo, with HTTPS, because crime is doing the same with proxies. OK, he's going to release the, the, the technical details uh, in, in Echo Party this uh, Saturday, next Saturday. But the idea is quite simple, uh, the idea. <laughs> So he's going to, to test it against two different websites, three different websites, Stripe, GitHub, and Dropbox, and with HTTPS connection, as you can see. And then he's going to connect to a proxy server, a rogue proxy server, and all HTTPS data will be still from the website without raise any alert. So if you are thinking about connecting to a proxy server as a, a good idea, think twice. Well, right now it's connecting. No alerts at all. Everything is green. And then. Everything is green. OK. Now, I start the proxy service. And launch crime on the, on the proxy server. Then connect to the proxy server. Everything is green. HTTP is normal. I think that he ne they need uh, some some traffic to do the the to do the the demo. And all the information related to the HTTPS connection are retrieved. Okay, the cookie. Well, it's impressive, but this. It's only for some, some guys like Giuliano and I. <laughs> OK. So the other thing is that probably most of you are thinking, well, we got uh, no script in my web browser, so I'm not worried about that because JavaScript is forbidden in my, in my web browser. OK. Uh, I would like to, to point you to a work that uh, was published by Mario Heiderich. Uh, the title is Got Your Nose, How Hackers Steal Your Precious Data with Those Scripts. And he is using just a lot of standards which are in your, in your web browser, as WDL, WML, uh, WAP, and so on, to, to steal data from your computer. So even if you are using Opera in a Linux machine with no script or whatever you want it, it's possible to steal data from, from your, your computer. And another interesting thought is the Tamagotchis, or the uh, smartphones. How many of you are able to, to erase the cache in the web browser right now, in your mobile, in your uh, smartphone? One, two. How many of you have been deleting the cache of your web browser in the last week? One, two, three. In the last month? <laughs> Ever in your life? <laughs> well. With that kind of devices, it's an interesting topic because uh, it's not easy to clean up uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript files. It's not easy to clean uh, cache. Sometimes, after uh, deleting the cache, it's a, it's a long, uh, long time consuming in the smartphone, and people uh, switch to another tax. And uh, taking into account that background is not available in all, uh, in all smartphones, sometimes you think that you clean up your cache, and the cache is uh, still remaining in, in your mobile phone. And also having that these devices are uh, designed to be always connected, they have some special uh, 
uh, unsecured option like they, they are not checking at all the BSSI uh, identifiers of the Wi-Fi, so only with the same uh, SSID of the Wi-Fi network or with the same uh, WEP key, the mobile is going to connect automatically to the Wi-Fi, so it's quite simple to, to put all them in, in a Wi-Fi connection automatically. Even taking into account that it's almost impossible to delete a previous connected Wi-Fi. If you are using iOS and you connected one day in a hotel in the States and you didn't erase that network when you were living, you were in, in the state close to that Wi-Fi, that Wi-Fi will be remaining in your mobile forever. It's impossible to delete that Wi-Fi. So any Wi-Fi with the same name your mobile will connect automatically. So taking uh, all these characteristics into account all together, it's very easy to do this with, uh, with uh, smartphones like this in Wi-Fi network. So the problem after finishing all this where, okay, if we were able to do it, to, to create this in only one, one day without using any special cellular day without using any special technology, just an IP address on the internet on a 100, uh, 100 Europe's server on the internet, who in the hell could be doing the same on the internet? The question is, any of you think that all anonymous proxy server on the internet are not doing the same? How many of those anonymous proxy server on the internet are belonging to the FBI, NSI, your government, my government. No, my government for sure not. It's Spanish. <laughs> so, in the end, take care of money in the middle schemas, take care of proxy, Tor, and of course, if you need to use it, uh, do it uh, carefully, and after finishing, clean up all your computer, destroy your virtual machine, and so on. And of course, take into account that virtual uh, private networks are not uh, are not a silver bullet. And that's all. <laughs> a fun <and> time. <laughs> so if you have any question, I, w I will be in the coffee because it's my yeah. time. So Let's see if this is on. Thanks for, no. for being here. Yeah, I'm going to do questions. I got some questions for you. Let's see if we. Why isn't this thing working right now? Hello. Stroll on. I'll do the other microphone. There we go. Um, sorry about that. This is hilarious. I saw this talk in, in Vegas too, and it's just hilarious. Uh, but it's also very serious. But first of all, is this proxy still up? Yeah, the proxy is still up, but we changed the port. <laughs> so the, the proxy server, which is published on the internet, is not working right now. Why but not? When we, were, when we were doing the demo in Black Hat, uh, the day after, someone published the, the new IP address, and uh, we, uh, in the next demo in DEF CON, we got 1,000 bots, and uh, we decided not to show the, the botnet. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, so, um, well... How much money did you make from this proxy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 seriously, but on a serious note, um, uh, first of all, I mean, it's very, very important to understand that it actually would remain in your cache. Uh, it will still be running. You move your system onto some, you know, some other network. Yeah. You, you, you take it to your car corporate network. This thing is still running. It's still stealing stuff from your internal network <coughs> now. <coughs> it's very well, important that you stress this the, so the people problem, understand it. The, the problem is that after publishing this idea, the number of proxies that appear on the internet increases a lot. <laughs> so the problem is that yeah. it's very easy to, to create this. It's only Apache, a squid proxy, two configurations in, in, in Apache, one small piece of code. The code is published on the white paper that we published on, on Black Hat. So Anyone can do it. And, and a lot of people are doing it. Yeah. Also, you don't really need the proxy. I mean, your proxy is good for infecting a lot of people in different yeah. places, but a Wi-Fi exactly. is just enough for a place like this. Exactly. So that needs to be stressed as well. It's just about being man in the middle. 
and that can be done in several different ways. Though. Yeah, that, and the good point of, of this attack is that uh, it's so simple to create the JavaScript that for antiviral system is in almost impossible to detect the infection file because any one of you can create different JavaScript files. So how do you, how the antiviral system is going to detect with uh, what fun JavaScript function within the JavaScript file is a virus or not? If they try to, to detect that JavaScript function in the JavaScript file, they will probably probably have a lot of fal uh, false positive and they will have a lot of problem with clients, customers, and so on. So it's almost impossible to detect this, this attack. So it, it is a serious it is a serious problem as well, even though it's really, really fucking funny. Uh, questions from the audience? Yeah, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking that if you know what to look for, uh, it should be pretty uh, simple to, to you know, go through all those or a list of the proxies that are out there and check if they're doing this, if they're using exactly. a similar technique. Have you done that? No, not, not, not my, but people working in WebSense were doing a, a test after our talk. They were doing the same trick that I told you at the beginning with the DNS. They were connecting through the proxy server, doing a get HTTP and download all files for different websites and then connecting to the same website without the proxy connection. And they were analyzing and they published an, a report with uh, the almost 20% of proxy were doing this, were manipulating in, at any point the, the HTML response pages. More questions? You're not, yeah. You're not that tired. <coughs> um, uh, why didn't you use the man in the browser in the demo? Man in the browser? Yeah, like to man in the tab. To um, inject a, a file once you are injecting the JavaScript to, to, to uh, yeah, in, I mean in install the demo. A, a plugin or something like that. No, I mean uh, like the man in the tab that you were talking about first. Why didn't you use that in the... Man in the in browser. To do money in the, the browser, you need to, to run a binary file on the, on the machine and you need to, uh, uh, to be approved by the user because you are installing a software in, into the no, web browser. No, but I mean, uh, like B, for example, has it in JavaScript. Yeah, B it's the same. The, the idea of beef is the same that uh, I presented. So you only need to inject a JavaScript file. The problem is that beef is injecting a JavaScript file, completely a new JavaScript file, and we are modifying one of the JavaScript files uh, upload by, download by the website. That's the only uh, difference. Uh, actually, when we were doing this research, we were in contact with, uh, with the guy managing beef. Okay. So, but it's the same idea. There's got to be more questions about this. No? All right. Thanks for a great presentation. It's really entertaining. Thanks to you. Um, I was wondering, I think I know the answer to this, but I want to confirm it. CSP, would that do anything to this to pre prevent this at all? CSP? The, the content security policy stuff? Uh, from the web server? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> web server can can uh, use the uh, security policies, and the idea if the client is uh, is taking into account uh, that policies, it will uh, it will uh, detect that something happened with the with the with the botnet. Because of this, we didn't use the HTML files to inject JavaScript. Because if there was a content security policy, then we will have a an alert. So in the end, if something, someone was using content security policy and they got a special policy for JavaScript using a hash function to recognize the real JavaScript files, probably will uh, our uh, JavaScript botnet uh, and, and won't, uh, won't, work in, won't be working on that environment. So okay. you need to create a special uh, configuration for that environment. Yeah. 